This episode is brought to you by Prime Day, happening now. You don't need to set new world records or compete in a triathlon to feel like a winner. You just need Prime Day. And good news, it's officially here with two days of epic deals on everything from electronics to home goods exclusively for Prime members. You'll feel like a big deal. Shop now at amazon.com slash prime day. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a Satellite Sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. We're so glad you're here today. I'm Leanne Dolan in Pasadena, California. I'm a writer. I'm a producer. I'm a podcaster. We are preparing for some heat here. So I am also hydrating. I am hydrating. How about you, Joel? What's up there? Hi, this is Julie Dolan. I'm in Dallas, Texas, and you know we have the heat here, Leon. So we're we're all set. Uh, and I am a podcaster and an urban nano. Liz, how about you? I'm good. I'm here in beautiful Bend, Oregon. I am so happy to be here. Um, be doing like Bend, Oregon kind of things this week. But first, sisters, you know one of my jobs is reading the mail, both the real mail and the uh, virtual mail. The that comes into our mailbox. And, you know, when you've been like out there on the internet for as long as Satellite Sisters has, a lot of people have your email address and not all of them are 100% legit, right? Let's just say that. So we did get a super exciting email this week from um, Mackenzie Scott, who, Ooh. you know, she is Jeff Bezos's ex-wife and she took, uh, she got quite a bit of money uh, when they split up. And so Mackenzie wrote to us this week, sisters, and she said she, she was going to give us $100,800,000. And uh, just because, wow. because that's, that's how she does now. <laughs> she, she, I don't know how she came up with that number. It seems like, you know, so I was thinking, what are we going to do with that much money from Mackenzie Scott? I mean, Julie, where would you even begin spending that for Mud Bath Productions for the Satellite Sister business? Oh, Liz, so easy. I, would, of course, would buy a resort, preferably a Four Seasons resort, Liz. Okay. <laughs> I think you call this brand extension. You're our big um, marketing guru. But that's, we get ourselves a nice Four Seasons resort. All our listeners can come. It's all there. Mackenzie, we're spending the money wisely. That's what I want you to know. Yes, it's going to a good cause. Liam, how about you? Well, I was thinking corporate retreat. I didn't think we'd have to buy one. It would just be nice to take one. Um, but now that Julie's got that covered with Four Seasons, I would like to, you know, we should each have our own soundproof booths in our homes. Like, yes. Julie should not have to sit on the floor of her closet anymore. Liz, you're probably in the closet. We need yes. see Sergio. We need some deluxe soundproof booths in our homes. Mm -hmm. that, okay. And ISDN lines. None of this Zoom nonsense anymore. Okay. We want... We want some legit production stuff. How about you, Liz? Which okay, well, that probably costs, you just spent about probably $20,000. Yeah. Okay. Got $100 million. <laughs> so you see, it's, it's, it's really tiny thinking, Leon. I had to <laughs> tell you, right? That's what I no. used to here at Mud Bath Production is tiny, <laughs> tiny thinking. I was just thinking it's very hard to spend that much money. I mean, yeah. Bezos, he went out and bought himself that yacht, right? Oh, yeah, right. You know, but then we, we all get seasick. We don't want that. We want the resort on land. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Julie, I was thinking in a similar vein that I feel like an annual Satellite Sisters adventure would be great. Mm -hmm. Like we could just start going places with people, exploring the world with uh, with listeners, with loyal listeners. That would be super fun. So, yeah, thank you, Mackenzie. I, I am going to be responding to your email. Of course, you wanted me to send you send you all of our banking information. So I will oh, okay. do that. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that today. And I look forward uh, to your transfer. <laughs> all right. Today on the show, we have a bunch of things going on. Um, Liz, you did, you're up there in Oregon, but you spent the week at uh, the track and field championships in Eugene. So yes. we're going to get some sports highlights. I have some other sports thoughts. 
You know, it was very sad to read about the death of Dr. Susan Love. She was such a pioneer in terms of women's health care, particularly uh, in the breast cancer realm. And we were lucky enough to talk to Dr. Love a couple times on Satellite Sisters and have some encounters with her. So we just wanted to take a moment to remember her here. Julie, you have an international news roundup. You're staying You're staying on a lot of stories. Uh, yes. What do you got? I, I am. But I think the one that I think is going to get the most attention is parrots are taking over the world. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've not yeah. heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's happening. And according to the New York Times, the other people taking over the world, finally, Gen X, my generation, we're in charge now. So get in line, girls. Get in line. Uh, and then, Liz, you have follow up to Barbie Heimer. It's happening. It's so happening, Leanne. You know, you had said that it was just sort of an in inside the entertainment biz thing. But no, that is not true. But I think it's really Barbie Hyman that's taking over the world. <laughs> OK. All right. That's uh, that's what's coming up on the show. But first, Julie. So you went toilet shopping this week? What's yes. happening? Yeah. Yes. I went toilet shopping this week. Okay. Is there anything more awkward than toilet shopping? Okay. I, no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I can't really think not. of it. No. Okay. So there it was. I, need, I needed a new toilet. So I went to a toilet store. Okay. A plumbing supply store. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, the I don't know if you've done toilet shopping, sisters. I don't know. No. Okay. It's been a while. It's okay. super embarrassing now that I'm picturing yes. it now that you say it. Yeah. You have to sit on the toilets. And no, no, no. You, there is no. That is not happening, sister. Okay. okay. I, so I went to the toilet uh, store and the first question they asked me and they said, do you have a picture of your toilet? And so, of course, yes, I have a picture of my toilet right next to the picture of my grandchildren. Yes, <laughs> I, I can show you that. Okay. All right. And then... Then they have the toilets. Now, I, I this was four feet, six feet away. That's about as close as I could get to the toilet. I was not getting any closer. I kept my hands on my hips, sisters. I That, that was it. <laughs> just line of toilets. Okay. And I was just pointing at things. Okay. I was not, I mean... I mean, I, you can't really explore the features of a toilet at, at, at which when you go to Home Depot or a plumbing store, right? Right? I, I guess. guess. I mean, some way. of the parts have completely gross names, which I am not going to say on Satellite Sisters. They have gross names, okay? <laughs> All right? Okay, and you, now I have no idea what you're talking I know, about. That, okay. I don't. Do I have to say it? Okay? No. No, I'm not going to say it. It starts with P, okay? The letter P, okay? That's all I can say. Okay, and you don't even want to touch that handle? No, because it's just flopping around. It's They're not attached to anything. Mm -hmm. So that's horrible. So so I was like, well, I, I so I have no questions to ask. Did you get a heated toilet? Did you at least no, no, I no, no special thing. No, <laughs> just, just, just a toilet from four feet away. That was as much. Like, and I said, what's your best seller? Because I felt like, I don't know why, but I thought I'll just buy the toilet that's the best seller. It's not mm -hmm. that other people, they're not testing toilets either. I don't know how they know it's a best seller, but <laughs> so that's what I did. I just, I couldn't take the embarrassment any longer. I said, I'll just take that one. That's it. Okay. Pointing at it from four feet away. I can remember when Dick and I were buying a toilet for this house here in Bend. There was a model that was like supersized or taller. I bet they had some tricky word for it. So you didn't have to sit down so far. That seemed like a good idea. It was like an old folks toilet. But I don't think we bought it because, again, too embarrassing to buy that. But, yeah, there's a lot going on in the toilet aisle. I don't know how you do that from four feet away, Jewel. No, just just that's it. Hands on my hips. Just pointing, pointing, pointing. That's it. OK. OK. I'm out. OK. All right. Well, um, well, I congratulations on your new toilet. Regardless, <laughs> congratulations. Okay, so okay. yes, completely no. embarrassing. Okay, good, good. Now everybody's going to want to see the picture of the new toilet, aren't they? Okay, they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Well, uh, yes. For the I spent the last four days in uh, at Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon. It was the United States Championships for track and field. So we were picking 
are not picking. They were competing uh, for the the national champions. And uh, but then the winners, the top three, become the world team that goes off to the world championships next month in Budapest. And you may be saying, wait a minute. Didn't Liz talk about the world championships last year? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking, Liz. Yes. I know. Why are you talking about this again? Yeah. But here's the thing. The world championships usually alternate years, but because of COVID, oh. when they moved the Tokyo Olympics back a year from 20 to 21, we had to move Oregon 21 back to become Oregon 22 but Budapest had already been awarded the rights for 23 and boom, then next year you have Paris 24. So for the first time ever, we have world championships two years in a row. Oh, and, okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So Excellent. A, a good explainer, Liz. Good yes. explainer. Yes. So it's, um. so I'm just going to give you a couple of my highlights. Uh, you can watch them. They're all on Peacock if you want to watch it. So speaking of getting another chance a second time around, I love the redemption moments at some of these competitions. So you may recall that last year, Gabby Thomas, who runs the 200, she did not make the world team because she had a torn hamstring right before the U.S. championships. And she is so nice and it's she is so beautiful when she runs. But I remember seeing her last year very upset crying. She wasn't going to win a national championship and she also wasn't going to go to Worlds. And it was the, uh, just the, it was a hamstring injury. So this year she came back better than ever, healthy, and she beat Shakari Richardson in the 200. So she's now our national champion this year. So it's, it's nice when you have them back to back years like that, that she could, Gabby could go out there and get the job done this year. So that was very fun to see. She was uh, elated when she won. It was elated, right? Yeah, she yes. was just so happy. Yes. Yeah, she's got a runner. Mm. So beautiful. And she, as she crosses the finish line, she's got her arms up, the look yeah. of joy on her face. Amazing. So then, okay, speaking of Shakari. So Shakari Richardson, um, you've, even if you don't follow track and field, you may have heard of Shakari Richardson. She is a 23-year-old who competes in the 100 and the 200 meters. Uh, you know, the 100 is a big event for her. And she's got a super big personality and a very colorful presentation. Uh, it includes hair of many colors, nails, jewelry. Last year, she was running some races wearing a tiara. You know, she she just has a lot going on. She carry has a lot going on. And so for the for the several days in advance and then during her preliminary rounds and the semifinals, she was sporting a black headband and orange hair. She colors her hair a lot, orange hair. But then for the final, Julie, you may not have seen this. For I the did. Fi- for the final, during her intro, so it's very tense. This is the final of the 100 meters. This is a major, major event. It was the final event of the first night. They call her name. They're introducing her. She reaches up. She pulls back the headband. Then she pulls off the orange hair. It's just a giant wig. She tosses the wig behind her. Underneath the orange wig, she's got gorgeous braids. And then she just carries on with her business. Okay, I got to tell you, in the stadium, the crowd went totally wild. I mean, it was just like, what is happening here? But here's the thing. If you're going to do that, you must win the race. Right, right. You you really must win the race, which she did, like in the fastest time uh, in the world this year. So she, she really did that. Do you think it distracted the other runners when she uh, took her took her wig off? I do not know. All I know, Julie, is it totally it certainly distracted the people in the stadium because then we got on the big giant experience board, like the huge video board uh, at the end of the stadium. We got a close-up of the wig just laying there on the ground. And again, people went wild when they saw the close-up of the wig. But anyway, she did the job. That's all I can say. She did the job. Then um, the third performance I wanted to shout out was the steeplechase, which is, you know, this is an underrepresented event. People don't think about it too much because it's a crazy event, right? You're, you're jumping over barriers. You're jumping into water pits. It just looks so dangerous out there. They're smashing into each other. 
So in the men's steeplechase, a, an athlete named Kenneth Rooks, he's a college student, BYU, he took a bad fall two laps into the race. So you think, okay, well, he's out. There's no chance now because now you're way back from the pack and you got it. Anyway, this Kenneth Rooks, he got up. It's slowly, slowly, slowly. Dun, 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 he the musical accomplishment is very nice, Liz. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Julie, he caught up with the lead pack and then he outkicked everyone and he won the event. He oh, won the that's event. fun. That's fun. He's exciting. He's, and he fell down, got up, won the event. Even with 500 meters to go, he was only seventh and boom, he won the event. A college student. People were shocked, again, screaming, yelling, appreciating that. So that was another performance uh, that I really enjoyed. And then one last thing I wanted to mention, not really performance related, but, um, you know, pooch related. Uh, you may remember uh, track star Thing Mo. She makes a lot of news for herself. She won two Olympic gold medals in Tokyo. And what she really, really wanted more than anything after she won those gold medals was a pug. She said, since the fourth grade, I've wanted a pug. And, you know, she's 20. She's like, she's so, she, she's so young. And she's very young. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So after her two big wins in Japan, she went, she's from Trenton, New Jersey. She went home to Trenton, New Jersey. There was a huge celebration in her honor. And her brother surprised her at the huge celebration with a pug that she named Bentley. Okay. So that's just the backstory. Bentley has his own Instagram. It's at uh, Bent Bent the Pug. In case you want to follow that, of course I do follow it. So I'm there. I just happen to be in the same hotel with a thing, Mo. She's there with Bentley, and of course I'm there with Hooper. So who gets to meet Bentley in the lobby of the hotel? But Hooper Dolan gets to we had a very nice the celebrity sighting. Was how was Hooper excited to see the super, I, celebrity dog? I don't think he quite realized the importance of it. You okay. know, I, I should have given him a little more background. But anyway, that was super fun. I got a cute picture of the two dogs together that I posted in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. So so me, meeting uh, Bentley the pug, uh, and of course a thing was there too. So that was fun. Um, that was that was very fun. And then the one last thing I'll mention is that one of the nice things about these big sporting events in small towns is that you kind of run into the athletes all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like they disappear behind, you know, into some secret place and you never get to see them. So like the final night I was in a restaurant with some of my friends and Isaiah Harris, who had won the silver medal in the 800, he walked into the restaurant. His whole team was waiting for him. The whole restaurant starts cheering, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's fun. Very nice. so, yeah. Hey, that was really nice. And then, but then the same night I got into the elevator with Sincla Sinclair Johnson, um, who she came in fourth in the 1500 sisters. So fourth, fourth doesn't get you on the team. Fourth oh. doesn't get anything. So I didn't know what to say to her. But then I saw yesterday uh, that she got named to the team because a thing had withdrawn from the 1500 because she's just going to run the 800. So everybody gets to go. Anyway, it was. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot of inside in, track there. Inside detail that yes. I feel what will come in helpful to to us and to listeners as we approach the Olympics, you know? Yeah. And to know who these people are. Yes. yes. Good work. Liz. Anyway, that is it. It was, it was much fun, much success, very exciting. Just a quick sports follow-up to that. I have to say, I am not adjusting to the new Wimbledon schedule. I know it's been a couple of years now, but the fact that Wimbledon is still going on is just, it's getting in the way of so many other sporting events. Now, if you're not a tennis player, maybe you don't know, like Wimbledon used to wrap up 4th of July weekend, which yeah. was great in America. Like, it was great because you had an extra day or two off. You could watch more matches was always on in the morning when we were getting 4th of July ready. And then like two or three years ago, they moved it to give the players extra time between the French and, and Wimbledon. But now it's running into everything. Like this weekend, there were so many sporting events on. We were trying to watch the track and field. We wanted to watch the women's LPGA, the golf. Uh, the U.S. Open was uh, at Pebble Beach, and that looked spectacular. We had to jam that in. There was the British Grand Prix. We had to get our Formula One fix in. I couldn't take it. The Wimbledon, it was 
Leanne, if any family in terms of sports viewing and fandom can handle multiple championships at the same time, I believe it's your family. Thank you. I I think that you must have a spreadsheet, viewing (laughs) spreadsheet worked out. Uh, You know, your family gets up at all hours to watch Formula Formula One races anyway. So I think I think you can handle this, Leanne. You know, it's true. We did manage to jam them all in. <laughs> so we did. We did manage to. It's just, it's just. I feel like Wimbledon should wrap should wrap earlier in July so we could move forward. But, uh, but I think well, you're going to have to file an official protest. Okay. There's got to be a way to do that. All right, I'll I'll tweet at them. Uh, no, I, I'll thread them. I'll thread them, Liz. I'll thread. Oh, them. okay, okay. Ooh. All right, stay with us. Uh, more news coming up. We'd like to welcome a new sponsor to Satellite Sisters. We're happy to be working with Stellar Eats. Stellar Eats is a gluten-free, grain-free, dairy-free baking mix made with eight or less real ingredients. And it has minimal add-ins for quick and easy prep with common ingredients. It's on a mission to change the way people think about healthy eating. And Julie, you made the Stellar Eats banana bread this weekend. I Lee in. Yes. Or back on your findings. Leanne, it was delicious. It was moist. My family loved it. It was quick and easy to make. But what I liked a lot about it was the recipe is very flexible. So depending on what your preferences are for oils, for example, you could use different kinds of oils with this. So I think this is going to really work for a lot of people, and it's going to work for your family and your guests when they come. Yeah, we had guests this weekend, Julie, and I made the coffee cake, which was absolutely delicious. But right, I like to be able to say to people, oh, yeah, it's gluten-free. Oh, it's grain-free. Sure, it's vegan. Yeah, that's great. It's fantastic to have those options for something that's so delicious. And that is part of Stellar Eats mission. It's on a mission to change the way people think about healthy eating. And it caters to dietary preferences or those looking for a healthier way to treat themselves. You can find Stellar Eats baking mixes at Whole Foods markets across the USA and online. And it was super easy, right, Julie? It's almost foolproof. (laughs) <laughs> Leah, if you and I are talking about baking, you know it's foolproof. Yes, that's exactly. That's exactly right. It's perfect for the satellites, Mr. Head. All right, here's what we want you to do. Check out Stellar Eats products at Whole Foods across the USA and Canada or at StellarEats.com. To get 20% off your next order, use promo code SATELLITE20 at StellarEats.com. And Stellar is spelled S-T-E-L-L-A-R. StellarEats.com with promo code SATELLITE20 for 20% off your next order. Thanks, Stellar Eats. Feeling stressed and overwhelmed? Looking for a sanctuary of serenity? A respite from the demands of modern life? Discover the power of mindfulness and relaxation in managing stress with Calm. We love the Calm app here at Satellite Sisters. Calm helps us stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. Liz, we had some testimony about the call map on the Satellite Sisters Facebook group. Tell us. Tell us. We did, Leanne. You know, Debbie is a longtime listener, and she posted, I've been loving the Calm app recommended by Satellite Sisters. I just saw a new sleep story, and it made me think of all the Transformer movies I've watched with my son over the years. Optimus Prime's voice is perfect for a sleep story, and I'll be listening tonight. And there it is, building bridges with Optimus Prime. Uh, <laughs> sleep stories are very cool because you, you call me, you have the guided meditation, and you have the soothing sounds, but then you have these sleep stories, which are really nice to listen to as you're dropping off. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I think people don't realize there's a lot of stuff on the Calm app. They have expert-led talks on topics like overcoming stress and anxiety or handling grief or improving self-esteem or caring for relationships. You know, we love the daily movement sessions here and the and the content changes all the time, which is why if you are up to prioritizing your mental health and wellness, here's what you do to subscribe to Calm. If you go to calm.com slash satellite, you're going to get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription. And new content is added every week. So relax. Calm's got everything you need for a happier, healthier you, even Optimus Prime. 
For listeners of Satellite Sisters, Calm is offering this exclusive 40% off a Calm premium subscription. And that's at calm.com slash satellite. And Calm is C-A-L-M. Calm.com slash satellite for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash satellite. Thanks a lot, Calm. We're back with the Satellite Sisters, Liz, Leon, and Julie with you. Liz? You know, uh, we wanted to do a special Satellite Sisters salute right here today to Dr. Susan Love, who passed away last week. And she was a guest on Satellite Sisters several times and also the founding member of what's now the UCLA Revlon Breast Clinic. She became a best-selling author, like a public advocate for all kinds of things related to women's health, including getting more federal funding for women's health research. And most of all, she's the one that sort of invented the clinical approach for a breast cancer that really gave patients a stronger voice in their own treatment. And she really made a difference in this world because she's the one that encouraged patients to take an active role. And she also created sort of a comprehensive guide to breast cancer. Even before the internet was created, she was making that kind of information accessible. But one part, I read her obituary in the LA Times, and one part that I didn't know that really surprised me and is worth thinking about is that she said that in the early days of her practice in the male-dominated field of, sur- field of surgery, that breast operations were seen as less challenging and less prestigious work by a lot of the, the male surgeons. Oh. And she said, this was a quote, she said, I once had a chief of surgery tell me, the trouble with breast surgery is that the talk-to-cut ratio is all wrong. You have to talk too much for the patient for the amount of cutting you get to do. Oh, it's just, it's just shocking to think wow. that that was sort of the standard clinical, care. clinical approach. To yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, even though she was afraid of being sidelined in what was a low prestige area, she just decided to become a breast specialist. And the more patients she saw, the more she realized that that disinterested approach to how women were getting treated needed to be changed. And that is what she did. So uh, so we really salute her. Talk about your stay noisy surgeon, yeah. Susan Love, one of the best. She was, she was such a dynamo. And in addition to being on Satellite Sisters, I got to know uh, Dr. Love a little bit because she uh, she was a medical doctor, but she also got her executive MBA at UCLA when I was working at UCLA. And I just loved it because, again, this was a time when there were probably a lot, there were a lot more men in the class than women. And she was always such a strong advocate for women in all fields. And she used, she used to be on campus and she wore a big button that said, hot flashes are power surges. That's <laughs> what she said. Because she thought, I mean, she was just like, Women needed to, you know, we needed to add, she needed to, we all need to advocate for ourselves, but even menopause, which nobody wants to talk about. Right. Dr. Susan Love was talking about menopause and talking about that this is an important part in women's lives. And it is not, you know, it is the point in your life when you are the most powerful is during menopause. And I always found that really inspiring. Yeah, she was amazing and funny, right? She was oh, just super funny, quick and, you know, and as funny yeah. and smart. Yeah. Well, I saw her, Julie, a couple of years ago at UCLA. I went with a friend who was a graduate of UCLA Anderson School. And so they were doing like an alumni luncheon, inviting back uh, like three or four women that had gone through the program. And so Dr. Love was the keynote speaker. And she told an extraordinary story because she was an advocate of hormone replacement therapy, right? She was on, on board early. She thought that was good in general for women. And then there was that reporting, you know, that has turned out to be not, you know, not 100 percent true, not 100 percent scientifically uh, valid and was kind of a media misreading of results that, oh, HRT was bad. Stop it immediately. It causes breast cancer. But in the middle of that, she was profiled in The New Yorker by Malcolm Gladwell. And um, she said the article came out and the title of the article was 
Dr. Susan Love is dead wrong. And it was all about how her approach was completely wrong, particularly with regards to HRT. Wow. And she told this story. I mean, the room was silent when she said that. And she said, that destroyed my career. That completely, you know, dried up all the funding I was doing on my research. It was over. One of the reasons she went to UCLA to get her MBA was she said, I had to reconfigure like how to do my job and how to get funding. Like with this single headline, he he almost destroyed my career. Wow. And she said, and then like years later, when, you know, when the press and, and medical establishment was like, hey, we were sort of wrong about HRT. Sorry. She said, I am still waiting for my apology for Malcolm Gladwell. And wow. it has not come. But yeah. I, I thought that was an extraordinary story because she really was. She was willing to put herself out there. She really turned breast cancer with that Dr. Susan Love breast book. She really turned breast cancer into something that became treatable and not yes. just yes. Yes. No, exactly. she said. She gave that power to women. It wasn't just the slash burn and poison method of the past. It really empowered women. Uh, and and breast cancer, you know, became something that people could handle and they could conquer and they could get through. So I she she and she was funny when she told this story and she was smart when she told this story, but she was still mad. 20, 20 years later, she had not forgotten that. So uh, so, you know, she had a lot to say on that topic. But, um, yeah, it was just really so sad to read about her death seemed relatively young and, of course, from cancer. So something that she had battled, I guess, for a while. But um, so, Susan Love, thank you so much. I wish we could go back and find those old shows. We don't we can't because of all kinds of weird music rights. But I just remember really enjoying talking to her on Satellite Sisters when she came on. She was great. She was great. It was the best. Good one, Liz. Um. Hey, sisters, we, I thought this week we'd do an international news roundup. How about that? We haven't done one of those in a while. And, you know, do you remember just a couple of weeks ago there was that coup in, or attempted coup in Russia that was organized by the warlord uh, uh, boss of Wagner, Prigozhin? But yes. it failed. Yes. Um, oh, Joel, what's the, la- what's the latest on that? OK, well, you remember at the time I, I said one of my one of my rules about interpreting what's going on in Russia is that nothing in Russia happens that doesn't first start in the Kremlin. That's mm-hmm. what I said. OK. And OK. News this week. Now, Prigozhin was the coup had failed and he was supposed to go on to Belarus and be in exile. And that was going to be the end of him. And we all thought he was going to be, fall out of a window or be poisoned. But hey, news this week that Putin actually met with uh, Prigozhin just several days after the coup. In fact, he wore, he had 35 of the Wagner commanders, these, you know, these mercenary fighters come and meet him in Moscow to discuss ongoing plans. Huh. How do you think of that? Didn't I say at the time, I thought one possible mode, you know, I said at the time that I thought Putin might be behind the coup. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying these are the facts that are coming out today. And nobody's really sure where he is, but many people believe that he's in St. Petersburg, which was his hometown, and that's where he met um, Putin to begin with. So, you know, hey, we'll see. OK, I'm just. So you were right, but we still don't know what's actually happening. Exactly, Liz. OK, OK, OK. okay. okay. All right. <laughs> and you never know what's happening in Russia, which was another one of my rules about Russia, wasn't it, Liz? Yeah. Yes, it was. Okay. Yes. OK. All right. OK. Well, speaking of rats, <laughs> it hats off to New Zealand because they are embarking on a very bold strategy. They are saying that this is the equivalent of landing on Mars. Okay, you know what they're trying to do, sisters? They're trying to become rat-free by 2050. Oh, yeah, we can get rid of that. There's a bumper sticker. Okay, they want to get rid of the rats on the island, okay? Because the rats are killing all the native birds. Rats are not indigenous uh, to New Zealand, you know, perhaps, you know, they came with travelers, they came on boats, but they're there and they're and they're destructive and they're uh, killing uh, they're killing their native animals. And uh, the Kiwis have had enough of that. So they have, you know, they've set aside 20 million dollars to get rid of eight different kinds of invasive predators. 
I don't think that's enough money personally. It does not sound like enough. No. No, no. it doesn't, does it? But no. they they feel and they're gonna be using new technologies, okay? Again, because it's the equivalent of landing on Mars. <laughs> it's so tough to get rid of these rats, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, do they do they have a rat czar like New York City? New York City, I, I, rat I, they have someone who's in charge, and they're going to be do de- deploying new methods of uh, to kill the rats. But um, so we wish them luck for uh, with that. I mean, hopefully, you know, you know, it might work, uh, but I don't know. That's, that's cats. interesting. Is it cats? Is that what they're deploying? Just <laughs> that's the new technology. You know, it seems like it seemed like a lot of poison to me. Oh, I'm just uh, I'm just saying that. But I but some other technologies as well. Now cats were not mentioned, Leon. But uh, I wish them luck. Okay, boy, do I live wish I lived in South Korea? Because <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what? And here's the reason why: South Korea just changed. They replaced the original way of counting someone's age to to be now more consistent with the interna- international standard. In the past, they had a you know they had the uh, South Korean way, which is when South Koreans are born, they're one year old on the day. Oh. Okay. Oh. okay. So Everyone, okay, so everyone is one on the day you're born. And two, on January 1st of um, each year, you add another year, okay? so Okay, that is not, confusing. It's yeah. not tied to your birthday. So, for example, if you are born on December 31st, you're one years old, okay? The next day, January 1st, you're two. You're two years old. You see this? Wow. Wow. Okay. Very creative. Very creative. Okay. It is their age counting system, which um, they decided that they wanted to go with the international standard. They voted this through. So guess what? They just put it in. So it means for many South Koreans, they're now at least a year younger. Okay. <laughs> and maybe two years younger. That's... Think about that. Is that I, yeah? That would be a welcome change. Yeah, isn't that a good thing? I think that's a good thing. It took, I don't know why they had that other system, but that's what they had. So they're now all younger. Maybe we could come up with some new system. What do you think? I don't know. Okay, now this one is the most serious and the most scientific that I'm bringing to you today in my in my international news roundup, and this is from Scientific American. It was the cover story. Okay, parrots are taking over the world. Okay? Parrots are smart, they're adaptable, they're loud, and they're thriving in cities far outside their natural ranges. Do you have parrots in Los Angeles? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. You have parrots. Do you know where else they have parrots? They have them in Brooklyn, in New York, in Chicago. They have parrots in Chicago, (laughs) in Tampa, New Orleans, Los Angeles, Houston, Dallas, Austin. They're all over the place. They're in Mexico. Amsterdam, Rome, Tel Aviv, Singapore. And here is the reason why. They, it is a byproduct of the pet trade and animal trafficking around the world. Their original, their original native areas are South America, Argentina, Uruguay, okay? But people in the 1960s really started to get fascinated with parrots. And they're like, hey, I want a pet parrot. I believe, and or a parakeet, and parakeets and parrots are in the same family. We had a parakeet, the Dolan. Do you remember? You no, know, I had forgotten about that until you just said the word parakeet, and I could sort of picture it. The just yeah. in, our, in our house in Fairfield, the parakeet. Yes. Yeah, and, and we yeah. and we had some crazy system where we'd let it let the parakeet out of the cage and yes. it'd fly around in the house. Yeah, and then we'd have to take a towel and try to catch the parakeet. It was no. not. It was not good. Land. Okay. I have no memory of that. Obviously, born yet. was not okay. born yet. But that's okay. a funny story. That's okay. It's shocking that her mother allowed that. Shocking. <laughs> shocking. Okay. We I had think a- most of the free flying happened when she was not at home. Okay. <laughs> that would be my my gut. Because we just thought it was wrong that she was in the cage. We wanted to set her free. Okay. All right, but. This is a serious problem because they, they're they pretty clever, these um, parrots and parakeets. And uh, 
they have made they can make their own little multi-chamber nests. They do this on many times on utility poles. They cause all kinds of problems that way. Uh, not to mention they eat crops. Charles Darwin called them pests. Do you know that? Okay. Really? He did not like them. And apparently the parakeets and parrots like to live in cities and they're infesting these cities with all these parrots, okay? But they don't have it's it's hard to cull parrots, okay, because there is what is known as a cute factor. They're cute mm-hmm. looking, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. They're exotic. They they seem charming until they take over your neighborhood and they're so incredibly loud. It's just a- astonishing. You yeah. think there are a million of them out there and there are 12, but they're making yeah. so much noise. They make, they make a lot of, they're very noisy. They're, they're very messy. adaptable. They, they're messy. They don't care about the weather. Like they're living in Chicago. What's that about? You know, like they're, <laughs> they're clever. Okay. And they're, the culling, it's hard to, they don't know what to do with them because people think they're cute. You know, I mean, it's like, the Disney parrot Iago, very cute. Okay, right. He, he ranks second in terms of Disney popularity of birds. Okay, you know of all the bird characters in the Disney family, Iago is number two. Okay, you don't done have some me. deep research here. I did I did? These birds are innovators. They're problem solvers. They're socializers, and they're survivors. And they're taking over the world. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, are they? So who who is number one now? I don't well, know. Who's the I number one? Going to say that? I don't know. <laughs> Just I got the number two. Okay, we got to look it up. Disney characters, bird characters by popularity. Come back with with that information for Block C Land. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Julie, that is, uh, is is there any way that the anti-rat campaign can sort of overlap with the parrot campaign? Maybe the, quote, new methods will uh, will factor in here. Um, all right. Uh, so we're just supposed to leave it at that, Julie, that they're taking over the world. No, I, don't, I don't have a solution for that. Right. Unless Thank perhaps you. you want to get Prigozhin, you want to get the Wagner yeah. group involved, perhaps. Fine. Okay. All right. A couple of business stories, uh, just personal to me. First of all, I want to thank uh, the women of Happier in Hollywood. Okay. Now we love this podcast. It's two Hollywood writers, Liz Craft, Sarah Fain, but they also give lots of great life advice and uh, entertaining stories. It's very zippy. If you haven't checked out Happier in Hollywood, way to do it. But they suggested something a couple weeks ago, and I feel like this has changed my life. Something they called a Zoom coffee. Okay, this is a meeting strategy. Now, Liz, Julie, I'm sure you have all been asked to do a million, quote, informational meetings about your career, right? Yeah. With young people and you want to be nice to them and you want to be supportive, but like a lunch takes forever or a coffee means you have to leave your house. Like this. <laughs> okay. You got a lot of some parrots. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. So the Zoom coffee is a brilliant strategy. It's 15 minutes. It's you get 15 minutes, we're going to have a single cup of coffee and it's going to be over Zoom. And I'll tell you what I know. Mm-hmm. How great is that idea? Like, that's that great. I can do because I get asked a lot to meet about writing or I'd like to, you know, I have an idea for my book. Can I read it past you, even though I'm a total stranger? Um, so <laughs> let's see. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> you know, so the Zoom coffee. It just shuts people up. Like, this is it. I, I I, mean, I'm happy to do it. It's 15 minutes. That I can totally do. I don't have to leave my house. You enjoy your coffee. I'll enjoy my coffee in the privacy of our own homes. 15 minutes. I have set up like three Zoom coffees. It's just changed my life. So I want to thank the women of Happier in Hollywood. I think it's a great solution. I'd say it's a good tip, Lee. And I yeah, like yeah. That is a good tip. Yeah. Set, a t- set a time limit and don't leave the house. Yeah, I get it. I, I want to be helpful, but I can't give you a whole lunch. That's like forever in Los Angeles. You know, <laughs> driving, valet parking, it's forever. So it's 15 minutes. First of all, getting dressed, you know, getting dressed, <laughs> all that, Liz. All right. Yeah. Okay, another business story caught my eye. According to the New York Times, so you know it's official, Gen X, we are in charge now. We're in charge now. We are the captains now. Okay, it's great. (laughs) It's great that the boomers are all retiring. They're getting out of the way in upper management, and Gen X is in charge. And that's the group that's, and Gen X and what they call, um, are, what do they call it? Elder millennials. It is, it is, but it's a better term. It's like archaic millennials or something. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's a really funny term for people who are like, 
42 years old. Uh, uh, so yeah, elder millennial, millennials and Gen X, you know, 40 and 50 year olds, we're in charge now. But here's the big difference between the boomers and the Gen Xers. Um, it's that Gen X, they state, and it's probably true, that we were the first generation to really say, you know, maybe we shouldn't devote 100% of our lives to work. Maybe only 90% of our lives seems like a good idea. And um, so the bosses who are Gen X are more flexible. They're more open to generational differences. They're willing to work with you on your schedules because we were part of the generation. Remember, you used to come in before your boss and you used to stay and you just sat in that chair until your boss left and then then you could leave. That was definitely yep. part of the work ethos when we all started working. And now there's just more flexibility. So you're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Millennials. Okay. 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 See, we'll see how you do. Well, this is in charge now. And <laughs> well, you've always been in charge of us, Leon. So yes. We're well, coping pretty well. I think you're pretty fl flexible in terms of our working conditions. You know, <laughs> you don't want to see any of us. You know, we all stay in our own places. There you go. But okay, Julie, I, th I think Leon's about to cut all of our meetings to 15 minutes. <laughs> I know. I, I thought we, that. We, I'd be totally happy with that. <laughs> hey, I got to talk fast. All right. I mean, we're pretty tight now. We don't. Yes, we are. There's not a lot of meat in our meetings. There's no, almost, virtually no small talk. <laughs> so, but you're right. We, 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 we absolutely, uh, we operate independently. We're remote workers, flexible with schedules. Occasionally, I'll give people time off for a dentist appointment. So there you go. We're in charge now. You're welcome. Okay. Good luck, sister. Hey, it's Liz with a reminder that, you know, it's really easy to stay in touch with the Satellite Sisterhood on many platforms. That's right, Liz. For starters, we have a website, SatelliteSisters.com, where you can listen to all the podcasts. Uh, you also can read our blog posts, which include show notes. And if you want, you can snoop around in our bios and pictures. On Facebook, we have a couple of options. The first is our Facebook page, where we post our news and all of our news shows. You just have to like that page so you get our posts in your feed. And the second option is the Facebook group, a.k.a the nicest place on the internet. That's where you can post yourself and interact with everyone in the group. You can share, you can comment, or you can just enjoy the vibe. And that page is private. So things posted in the Satellite Sisters Facebook group cannot be shared outside of the group. To join, you simply search on Satellite Sisters Facebook group and then click to join or follow. You'll get one or two really easy questions to answer. That's just so we can make sure you're a real person and not a bot. And then we approve you. Done. We're also on Instagram, of course. You can follow at Sat Sisters. You'll see our posts there and get alerted to when we go live. And we're trying to go live more. In fact, we've been pretty regular on Fridays lately with a follow-up Friday. Individually, you can also follow us at Leon Dolan, at Satellite Sister Liz, or at Julie Oldest Sister. And finally, don't sleep on good old email. Yes, that's right. We have a show email address. If you want to write to us, it's just hello at SatelliteSisters.com. We really do read everything sooner or later. So come on, Satellite Sisters, stay connected. All right, a reminder, next week we are taping our Ask Us Anything summer special. We'll be taping it next week and you will hear it in August because we are taking some time off. We always take a summer hiatus. We have uh, you know, we need a little break. We got stuff to do. We have uh, other jobs or just, you know, sitting around uh, doing absolutely nothing. Sometimes we enjoy doing that, too. <laughs> so when Liam uh, lets us, we do do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, but, but ask us anything. We have gotten some great questions in already. But if there's something you want to ask us, you can just email us at hello at SatelliteSisters.com. And Liz, I've noticed a stunning phenomenon since you have started giving out that email address. Uh -huh. People are emailing us. Like, it's incredible. Now that we... It's a, it's a snappy email address. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> yes. Well, so you know, cool. it, well, first Mackenzie Scott found us, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, the, the 100 million buckaroos. And uh, so, yes, but we also want your Ask Us Anything question. 
So, uh, yeah, ask us anything or just send us. We've gotten just some chirpy, cheery emails. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do a mailbag next week because we've gotten so many emails. Once we started telling people what our email address is. I don't know. That's the marketer in you, Liz. Marketing. (laughs) Ask us anything. We have a lot of questions about family relations and production stuff. So we have some fun questions, some off-the-wall questions we'll be asking. So send in those questions. Hello at SatelliteSisters.com. All right, time for some entertaining sisters. I just want to kick it off. I feel like Candace Bergen had a great week last week. And I just want to acknowledge that, Ms. Bergen, because you are doing some fine work out there. Mm -hmm. She was a guest star on the Sex in the City reboot and just like that. And that show has been painful for me to watch from start to finish. I, just, I, can't, I don't know. But you're sticking with it. You're sticking with it. I can't help it, Liz. I know. I you just can't quit it. You can't do it. I'm waiting for it to get better or relevant or funny or smart. And none of that's happening until Candace Bergen showed up last week. Remember, she used to play Carrie's editor at like the high fashion magazine, right? So she was. Oh, I forgot that. Right. Way yeah. back, right? So she's back, you know, of course she was fired from her job and she had to start a newsletter and now she's starting an online magazine for, you know, women who are aging. And so Carrie has this like stupid crisis about, ooh, am I old? Yes, you're old. Okay. You're you're late fifties. Just embrace it. Uh, But Candace Bergen was so funny and so charming and so sharp. I loved it. So good for her. And then I also watched uh, Book Club. That was out. That's out now. It was in the theaters for like an hour and a half. And now you can find it <laughs> on, online on Netflix, I think. And so this is uh, it's book club two. And it's it's got Jane Fonda in it and uh, and um, and Diane Keaton and Candace Bergen. And um, it's not the greatest film, but honestly, it's not terrible. I, this is what I would like to say about that. <laughs> that is such a powerful <laughs> review, Leanne. Not terrible. Okay. Don't they go to Venice or something? Does they Venice do. look beautiful? Is this yes. scenery good? Are car- yes. costumes good? Yeah. Okay. Here's, that, here's what's good about it. Okay. They Jane Con- Fonda's character is getting married, and so they do a bachelorette trip to, to Italy. So fantastic. Uh, and then, um, so yes, Rome looks beautiful. Venice looks beautiful. There's it's some beautiful cinematography. Candace Bergen, again, has all the smart, funny lines. She is knocking it out of the park. She's great. She's having a big week. And then Diane Keaton's wardrobe to die for. So worth it for those three things. It's okay. just a not terrible 93 minute movie <laughs> that I think you might. Uh, 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 there look. probably is a moment this summer where where uh, many of us will yeah. be looking for a not terrible 93 minute movie. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm writing, a, I'm in the middle of writing a book now with, um, with two older female characters. So I'm just sort of taking in a lot of media in that. In that in that stratosphere, mm-hmm. so it's a little bit different setup for me. And I have to say, not terrible. Book club too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a much stronger review for another South Korean drama. This is called The Extraordinary Attorney Wu. Several people on our Satellite Sister Facebook group recommended this, and sisters, this was the highest rated drama in Korean cable history, South Korean cable history, this show. Extraordinary Attorney Wu. It's dubbed on Netflix. It's 16-part series that follows Wu Young Wu, and she is a female rookie attorney that's on the autistic spectrum. Now, I think L.A. Law had a character like that a long time ago, but but uh, Wu Young Wu is highly intelligent. She's got a photographic memory, and so she sort of earns her place in this high high pressure law firm. Okay, so it is essentially a courtroom drama, but this this series is absolutely endearing. It is so sweet. It is so positive. All right, I'm just going to go out on a limb. Okay, I'm going to make a really bold statement right now. You remember that Ted Lasso? I was I was on the Ted Lasso train early on. I had to convince you to to watch that show. Okay, season one of Ted Lasso. Do you remember how 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 sweet, how fun, how positive that is? Yes. That is what Extraordinary Attorney Wu has that same quality. Okay. Uh I you can it is not just for women. My husband watched this with me. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. The court cases that they do 
are very different, uh, which which I found interesting and intriguing. It's it wasn't like the same U.S. Uh, court drama. So um, 16 episodes. It starts. It's a little quirky when it begins the first episode. So stick with it. Um, it is both delightful and serious at the same time. A very uh, good portrayal of autistic people. And I think everyone will enjoy it. All right. Okay. Strong recommendation. Thank strong you. Rec- recommendation. Yes. You know, yes. I always worry when people say like, well, the first six episodes are a little slow, but stick with it. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. But if, if, the, if it's just the first episode I have to invest in. Thank you, Julie. I can do that. That's you. Two. Go two episodes. Okay. Two episodes. Okay. okay. Yeah, no. And then you'll be hooked. Then you'll be hooked. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a little uh, entertaining sisters follow up from a few weeks ago that is a thing Leon mentioned has really become like a thing. <laughs> so, so a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the Barbie movie, and I was saying I was just maybe being a little overcome with all the Barbie marketing. Uh, Leon, you mentioned that Barbie, which is obviously like a comedy about the doll Barbie, and it's directed by Greta Gerwig, it's opening on the same weekend as Oppenheimer, which is a biographical thriller about the physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, and it's directed by Christopher Nolan. And inside Hollywood, Lee, and you were saying inside Hollywood, everybody wants to know Barbie versus Oppenheimer. What's going to happen? Like two wildly different movies pitted against each other. But Leave it to the kids. The kids have it all figured out. So what has really developed is a phenomenon that they're calling Barbenheimer. (laughs) Uh, The kids have decided this is the ultimate double feature. They're going to go see Barbie and Oppenheimer on the same day. You can go to Etsy and you can buy Barbenheimer merch, right? (laughs) Hey, oh, no. You want all kinds of fun. stuff. Fun. It's fun, Julie. It's Let's fun. Get these people back into the theaters. Movies yes. used to be fun, not like a, you know, a trip to the ER, which is yeah. what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So both of these movies open on July 21st. So it's, you know, a couple of weeks from now. And AMC Theaters, which is the biggest movie chain in the U.S., they've reported that they've already sold 20,000 tickets to people that have bought both Barbie and Oppenheimer on the same day. So 20,000 people have already bought into Barbenheimer. And you know, that's only the tip of the iceberg. So Leon, I don't know if you knew that was about to happen, but good call. It is a thing. It is happening. Well, I mentioned it to my son. He's like, well, yeah, Barbenheimer. I mean, he he's in. So and then their strategy, of course, I mean, he sees everything. And yeah. He's a real movie fan. But um. So their strategy is to go to Oppenheimer first because that's like the more serious and then see Barbie second. Like that's how how they're working it. There will be costumes. There will be some light costuming. And he's very excited. Yeah, very excited to do it. So, yes, I think it's a I think it's fantastic for the movies. It's just a fun thing. Everybody should go see these movies. Great. I'm all in now. I'm all on. Yeah. OK. okay. All right. I think it is the people for Nolan's lucky opening day. He opens all his movies on the third weekend in July. That's uh, why he wouldn't move off this day when, but even though Barbie had already claimed it. Okay. So that's, you know, just again, a little bit of inside business. This is his, okay. this is his day. But uh, so uh, Liz, Julie, you in Barbenheimer, do it. I mean, what else we got? Yeah. Yes, I want, I want both of these movies to succeed. Yeah. I, I will probably see both of them opening weekend. Same day? I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull off same day, but I will definitely see both of them. So, yeah, I'm I'm plotting my schedule now. Though I haven't started working on an outfit at all. That seems, you know, ooh, really. <laughs> seems like a lot. Yeah, I don't think. Hey, Oppenheimer a movie? Do to wear an outfit? No, ha, ha. no I just, yeah, no, I think you do. I think that's the point, Jewel. You just got to get on board with both of them. Get a big hat. Get yourself a hat and a suit. Jewel. You can wear that to oh, oh, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> no, we're we're working on our big fun weekend outfits. We're too busy. We're too busy working on our Mama Mia dance party outfits. Uh, sure. Which uh, may look a lot like Barbie outfits. We don't know. We don't know. We're not giving away any details. Um, all right. That is our show for today. We want to thank, of course, our sponsors. We really do appreciate the sponsors of this show. 
It is what makes it possible for us to do all the production work we need to do behind the scenes. And we like to thank you for supporting the sponsors of Satellite Sisters. That is also a key piece of this circle, the Satellite Sisters Circle. So we appreciate that. Big thanks to Sergio Enriquez, our engineer. Thanks to Emily, our our graphic designer. Uh, of course, I've just forgotten Emily's new last name. Oh, yes. Okay. Don't remember either. Okay. Okay. It's something like Barbenheim. <laughs> now, up and, with up the and just stop listening to the show now. And she's okay. But, Emily, we're going to write it in the script every week now. It was louder milk. We got that down. We nailed, just nailed your old last name. We're going to get it. All right. Uh, our to do list for the week. What's well, here's the thing I'm going to Colorado uh, to the oh, okay. All right. Spend some time with the hiking. Oh, you're going to do some hiking, Liam. We are fans. I will not be hiking, Julie, but I did not want to stop my friends from hiking. They can hike if they want to. I, I you know, there's going to be some light walking, some other activities. You know, it's just not my thing. So I, I'm not going to sign up for the eight mile hike at 10,000 feet because we're going to be very high. So I'm a little concerned about altitude. I'm going to take it easy. I am going to hydrate, 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 hydrate. So that's it. I'm currently hydrating. I will continue to hydrate extensively for the next six days. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, my to-do list is in honor of Dr. Susan Love. I am going to book my annual mammogram. Okay? It's it's time. I'm going to do it. All right? Uh, So, uh, and everyone should. Okay. Well, this is Liz. As I mentioned, I am back in band. One of the first things that usually happens when a family member arrives in Bend is, boom, you get the text from our brother Dick inviting you to come over for grilled salmon. So, boom, (laughs) that's what I'm doing tonight. I got here yesterday afternoon. I I mean, I don't know. Did he see me drive up? I have no way of knowing. (laughs) I did not take long before the the grilled salmon uh, text arrives. So I'm very excited about that. But one other thing, we have a longtime listener here in Bend, Barb Troyer runs a vegan food truck called A Broken Angel. And I usually like to stop in there for, you know, some treats from Barb Troyer's Broken Angel while I'm in town. So those are, so I have two of my meals planned, sister. So those are two of my meals while I'm here. Great. Boragine. Emily Boragine <laughs> is the last name. And so okay, good. Much, very much like Barb and Heimer, Liz. <laughs> I knew it sounded the same. <laughs> oh, God. Woo, we're going to need that hiatus. All right. Uh, so, Liz, you have salmon and food truck. Excellent. Yeah. Julie, uh, good work. That's a good reminder. Uh, sisters, have a great week. You too, Leanne. You too, Leanne. And don't forget, call your satellite sister. <laughs> <laughs>